Hi, today we're photographing a bush, or at least we're photographing at a bush. If you notice, when I was putting the hide up here, I'm right in the middle of an open field, there's no hedgerow. But there used to be a hedgerow here, dividing the field into two, and many years ago it was rooted up. But along the length of it, there's still a ridge where the hedgerow used to be, and there's the odd bush and the odd bramble patch. So I was putting the hide up where there's this quite large clump of bramble and the idea is you've got one very large clump of bramble in the middle of a big field. Whenever a small bird is going across this field it's a natural perch for them. It's fairly instinctive that they will go and land on that, that perch and have a look around them. So it can be a very effective way of photographing birds. We've got one isolated perch in the middle of an open area that's where the birds are going to be and around here well there's lots of skylarks but they're not likely to land on it um, linnets goldfinches uh, white throats anything really that passes through go back 30 years and this was probably my favorite way of photographing birds just wait and see photography i'd pick on a spot like this put a hide up sit in and all sorts of things were likely to come in front of you doesn't happen so much these days simply because we don't have nearly so many birds. I mean this field 30 years ago would have been full of green finches, yellow hammers. Now it's quite exceptional to see either of those species in, in this area. But we've still got the linnets and in fact as I've been watching this bush through the binoculars over the last few days there's a linnet been perched on the top of the bush quite frequently so i suspect they've even got a nest in here and what will happen when the female's building the nest the male will follow her in he doesn't contribute but he keeps guard he sits on top of the bush and maybe has a quick sing while she goes in and builds the nest and then when she's sitting on eggs he will sit up on top of that bush for hours at a time just singing away so Maybe I'm going to get pictures of linnets, hopefully a few other things. But I still enjoy this uh, wait and see photography, it's just not as effective as it used to be in the good old days. Two linnets kept flying into the bush but I never saw them side by side. But one or the other would come up on the top and call for a while. I'm pretty sure this is the female, but the male wasn't much brighter. A male can have a lovely red breast and red cap, but with this pair it didn't. The weather is not what I'd like, it's raining at the moment and we've got a very grey sky behind the bird. I don't like that, especially for still photography, I want colour. I don't want a white sky or grey sky. I don't mind a black moody sky, but normally if I've got a sky I want it to have a bit of blue in it. So this is not a perfect situation. The other choice is that the, the linnet comes down lower, so it's got a green background of the, of the distant hedgerow rather than the sky. That's okay, and the dull light doesn't matter then. And for video it doesn't seem to matter so much either. You can get away with distracting backgrounds, distracting foregrounds even. Because the bird's moving it, it helps, and I think that's the same with the sky as well. I don't tend to complain about the sky so much when I'm shooting video. This is the male, but you can see he's not very red at all, and no red on the forehead. It was the female that came up on the top more often than the male. So today I'm using the OM-1 camera body with the 150 to 400 mm lens. And I've taken the stills pictures without the built-in 1.2 extender and with it, so it's just a switch on the side. Now we've got the built-in 1.2 extender. It's marvellous, you can just do that so quickly. But now in addition to that, I'm going to add an external 1.4 extender too. So we now lose one stop of light with that in place. And in theory, it slows the autofocus down too, but very hard to see the difference, very hard to measure it. But generally speaking, if I'm doing a bird in flight, I don't want extenders on, because um, it's going to slow down that autofocus, and usually I'm interested in the shutter speed being higher too. But for static pictures, it's fine, and it's very hard to see the difference. 
with the 1.4 extender on yes you can see it degrades the image marginally but it's hard to see it but with the built-in 1.2 extender I can't see any difference and I, maybe that's because they can calibrate it individually for each lens but uh, it's very very good and just a few stills pictures I had to overexpose by two-thirds of a stop because of the grey sky behind it and you always make sure you take vertical pictures as well as landscape format and I want the bird looking to the left looking to the right and on different perches ideally as well as much variety as possible and another visitor the common white throat I'd have been happier if it had been a lesser white throat in showing like this Generally speaking, it's much easier to photograph common white throats than lesser white throats. The latter is far more skulking. And a couple of stills pictures. The ISO was 1600. I had the built in 1.2 extender, so 500 mil in effect, and about two thousandths of a second for the shutter speed. <laughs> that was only moderately successful, just two species. Not great, but. Uh, I enjoy sitting in hides and this Beautio single person hide is by far the best hide I've ever owned. I've really give up on using my British hide now with the telescopic poles. This is just so quick to put up and take down. Thanks for watching.